Welcome to the London Luxury Afloat Show, where we've got the opportunity to have a look around a number of new boats, including this one here. Now, this is the brand new Azimut 53 flybridge, which is in fact now the entry level flybridge in the Italian Yards range. It's been designed by Alberto Mancini, who is a bit of a master when it comes to creating really sporty looking boats, even quite voluminous flybridges like this. And you can see from the profile that she is truly an absolute beauty. So let's get down onto the pontoons and take a closer look inside. So starting at the stern, what have we got here? So first up, big hydraulic bathing platform. Now there's no tender garage on this, so you will have to keep that on the platform itself, but you just slot in chocks there and then the whole thing lowers down into the water and launches and recovers the tender. You've also got a bathing ladder there. Very nice touch, because even though it's lovely just to drop that below the level of the water, you still need to be able to clamber in and out. But there is nothing better than sitting with your feet dangling in the water, lowering the whole thing down and just shilling your toes and there. Now, the reason for that window is, of course, because behind here, you can fit a crew cabin. Now, this boat hasn't actually got the crew cabin fitted. They have left it as a huge storage lazarette. And to be honest, I think a lot of people will choose to do that. When you're cruising for a bit of time, there's nothing better than having plenty of space to store all your kit, all your bits and bobs. Obviously you've got these covers in here. This is a boat show. There's always extra things, extra clobber that's needed, but you can see you can fit your freestanding chairs in there. But if you do spec it out as a cabin, if you, whether that's crew or just an occasional extra cabin for kids or whatever, you can have a single bed in there and a bathroom area up this end. But having that, window makes a huge difference it just makes it feel a lot less claustrophobic than if it was purely kitted out and there's a lock on that so i just need to lift that up and then that whole thing drops shut again so and locks in there now whilst we're here another couple of things to notice so really stylish fair leads here but it's not just the fair leads they have thought of everything so you see these stainless steel bars here even up there that is to stop the rope rubbing against the gel coat and that makes a huge difference if you leave it for a long you know for a month or more then the rope will gradually wear away at the gel coat and you'll get a little flat patch on the actual grp this way the ropes even if you haven't crossed at the stern as springs when you're mooring stern two then that will stop that happening just a really thoughtful little detail now coming up there is entry only on the starboard side into the cockpit here you can see there's one locker for the shore power cable in there second one on that side for the bilge pump there is a deck deck wash there too again doubling up here exactly the same fair leads but those chafing lines stop it chafing and then really nice deck gear at the back stylish cleat and electronic winches so just operated by your foot can't quite get hold of that one but you can see you just press that and there you go wear away pulls it all in tight there's a the gate to keep the cockpit nice and secure it's quite a heavy lift on that actually but you can see that once that's locked in place it is nice and secure and then there's another storage locker behind that We've got a manual control for the fire suppression system in the engine room there if you need it it's automatic too but if you need to trigger it manually it's in there but also a nice little locker for lines maybe put your shoes in there it's a lovely big cockpit area here. There's this L-shaped wrap of seating, really comfy looking sofa, big squidgy cushions, lovely backrest, nice gentle angle to it. Lots of scatter cushions. It's a boat show, so obviously you have to have lots of scatter cushions. And then a very nicely finished teak table. So rather than going for a, a, a natural teak finish that will obviously go gray over time or a highly polished gloss finish, there's a very nice satin effect on that which looks classy, but hopefully is a little bit easier to maintain. Over on this side, there is a, a wet bar area. So we've got an ice maker in there. There is sink under there, bit of storage here. And then these are a lovely touch. It's actually a wine chiller. So you can drop your bottle of Chablis in there or a nice bottle of champagne. It will actually chill it. Very nice touch. So controls for the stereo there. And then if we go on around up the side deck, now you can see these very secure railings. There's a wire on the inside. 
opening windows it makes a big difference just having a bit of extra ventilation through there and then up to the foredeck area where you can see this rather lovely sofa here so not quite deep enough to to create a dinette there's no table option there it is purely for sitting down but it's just tall enough to be able to relax put your feet out have a glass of wine a bottle of chilled beer all sitting out there's probably room for five or six of you facing forwards here and then these lovely sun pads in front of you now i've put this one up so you can see that all the headdress are on these hydraulic rams and that makes a big difference it just means that Normally on a sun pad, a flat sun pad, you've only really got the option of lying on your front or back. You know, it's a bit of a hassle trying to prop yourself up to read a book. This way you can prop all those up, sit there, read a book, bottle of beer in your hand. It's a perfect setup. And then that trademark squared off azimut bow, again, makes a surprising difference. It just creates space for you to move around a bit more comfortably. Oh, we've got somebody flying around on their flight board here. Very cool, little electric foiling board. So. There is an anchor locker in there, if we pop that up, you can see all the chain is nicely flaked down there. Now there's not a separate locker for fenders and ropes and chain, it's all one big locker, but is nicely, there is a little hand, well there's a clip for the winch handle there, you can see I think there are hose fittings there if you want to wash it down. And then drop that down, sorry, pop that. And then stainless steel anchor or with the electric foot controls down here to let that down. And moving on past that, there's a couple of cup holders either side and of course controls for the stereo so you can choose to listen to something while drinking the beer on the sofa there. Big windscreen, two large windscreen wipers and then you can see that forward facing windscreen that protects, gives you all that wind protection up on the flybridge. So carry on back down this side deck and let's go and have a look at that flybridge while we can so nice shallow angle to the steps it's not a ladder uh, proper steps up there whilst we're here you can see so that's the main battery switch is again really clever touch it just means that you can turn the whole boat off with one switch on your way out when you leave it go out for your dinner in the restaurant that evening you don't have to run around turning multiple switches off you can just turn it all off there and little locker for your cleaning gear, very important. And over on this side, you can see there is a space for an optional second helm station. So you can have your IPS joystick controls there, when particularly useful in the Mediterranean when you're mooring stern too a lot, it means you can control it all from there whilst having a look exactly what's going on the stern, exactly how close you are to the key, uh, or indeed up and down either side. So this boat hasn't got it fitted, but that is an option well worth having in the Mediterranean in particular. So let's go up these steps. You can see there's LED lighting behind them. Onto the flybridge itself. And this is a really good space. Now this is just a fantastic wrap of seating all the way around that table. Again, nice gentle curves everywhere. This kind of fabric finish, very modern. And although it looks like it's going to stain, you can feel that has got a kind of water repellent finish on it and closed cell foam, so it's actually surprisingly easy to maintain too. Now this is a piece of kit, this table, look at that. You can see that is three stacks deep and there's a reason for that. First of all, let's admire that very fine stainless steel electronic adjustment that can go up and down so you can turn that whole area into huge sun pad. But this is what I wanted to show you, the table itself. Now the reason it's got quite so many parts to it is because if I shove it there, you can see that slides across. Little finger recess in there, help lift it up, drop it down, and there you have got a truly enormous outdoor dining table. Now that makes a huge difference. So often on these flybridge boats, you know, you invite your friends on board, there's six, eight, ten of you on board, it's fine when you're all sitting around having a drink, you stop to try and have lunch and you suddenly find you can only fit six of you around the table. You could easily get eight around this. You can have three on that side, have one at each end, and then you could have three more freestanding director's chairs there. Hey presto, you've got eight people sitting at the table. 
Now the other thing to notice while you're here, you've got the radar on a separate arch back there, nice and high, so see over the top of everyone's heads when you're seated. And then this huge bimini. Now you can see that there's a full length bimini that stretches all the way forward, all the way back. And magically that is on electronic struts. So that whole thing folds forward and backwards electronically at the touch of the button. And the whole thing folds flat into a little recess behind that sun pad there. So it doesn't get in the way. You don't even know it's there when it's not in use, but you have got a full length bimini when you need the shade. Wet bar over on this side, grill, sink, all the usual stuff. Bin there for your empties and fridge under there for your fools. Helm station up here, of course. Twin Garmin screens, all touch sensitive screens, recessed glass bridge effect. And again, matching helm chairs here. Drop down bolsters. I mean, you're probably gonna be sitting most of the time here, but what a lovely spot to drive from. Classic four spoke azimuth wheel, twin screen so you can have everything you need at your fingertips. All the controls here. You have also got a second set of remote controls there. I mean, you can easily reach these so they're not too much a stretch away, but if you're bouncing around a bit, sometimes easy to control it using that little mouse there, that little rocker switch. Classic Volvo controls there, fly-by-wire obviously, joystick control so you can absolutely control it, park it on a spot, put it exactly where you want it, and a bow thruster. So might seem overkill when you've got IPS drives, but actually sometimes you just want to nudge the bow in or out a bit. So really nice to have that option too. Glass holder, those are the controls for the Bimini and a few more, you've got horn, engine room bilge, etc., etc. So let's take a look inside now. Drop back down. And here we go into the saloon itself. Well, I say the saloon, it's actually, it's a classic half galley layout on this one. So doors slide across, nice unencumbered access into the saloon. So this is all the galley area. And even the oven here, I rather like this touch actually. You see how that slides out. So very neat, just pops into place there. You would never know it's there, but you want to use the oven, give that a press, out it pops, slides up, tucks away in there. How neat is that? Again, all of these are on little pop buttons, so plenty of storage there. And oh, I always love these. These are just so magic. Look at this. So keeping it all nice and secure, we've got these little latches there and then you can pull that out and all the azimuth branded crockery, all the plates, all the bowls, little cups and saucers, obviously espresso cups, very important. And even in there, I don't think that slides out, but you can see there are serving dishes for your vegetables. Super classy. Now over here, this looks like a work surface. It is lovely leather top in that, it's nicely padded, but it also, get my fingers in there, lifts up and gives access to all the electronic switch panel. I just think that's a really nice way of doing it. Normally you're sort of poking around in a dark corner of the boat somewhere with all cramped up. Here you can take it all in at your leisure. It's all beautifully marked, your barbecue, your boiler, ice maker, cockpit fridge, everything really nicely done, very accessible, and you would never know it's there. Smart tea, there's special racks for your wine in there, controls for the Fusion stereo, very delicate little handle. So this is all the an Alberto Mancini boat and every little inch of it has been beautifully designed inside and out. So fridge obviously too ugly to be on show so they have put it behind a nice door here but not quite full height there is a little bit of storage up above it but good size fridge and the freezer compartment in there and because you've got that drinks fridge over on the other side you can use all of that for food but 
again neatly tucked away when you don't want to see it. Miller induction hob, four rings, quite small but four rings and this is a nice touch. So this is the opening window, manual window. I can't really do it with one hand but that pops open and it means you have got an opening window section there. But if you don't, if it's too cold or you're keeping the air conditioning in, there is also an extractor fan under that surface there. Very subtle, very subtly done, but it just means it'll literally suck the steam out and ventilate it out from there. Circular sink. Very nice marble effect top. Big drawers for all your cutlery in there. Storage. Usually done. Some extra little spice rack down there. And I think in here that is a little mini dishwasher. So very discreet, very nicely done. You barely know it was a galley, but all the equipment is there. Now, lovely seating area forward. Got these big windows, stylish kind of cream curtains if you want to keep the sun out or keep it a little bit more private, but very nice soft color palette here. Nice and gentle, nothing too, I mean, again, everything beautifully curved so you're not bashing into sharp corners, but it just looks really welcoming. That's kind of fabric effect, nice gentle curvature to all the corners, lovely deep cushions, and a very classy kind of dusty oak table. Now you can see that that splits and pulls open and there is an extra leaf to go in there. It actually lives under that cushion there but just something very calming and relaxing about the whole look and feel of this boat. Another sofa opposite, so very sociable arrangement. You can easily see six, eight, ten of you sitting around there just having a lovely time in the evenings. A couple of small steps up, just one to watch when you're moving between the galley area and the saloon, but quite nice to have some separation. So you can come in here with your wet feet, no problem at all. You're not gonna be dripping on the carpet, but then when you want slightly more refined, slightly more elegant saloon area further forward, this is all beautifully carpeted. And you can imagine sitting in here in the evening, and then there is a TV set behind the sofa there. That's obviously rises electronically and you can all chill out there, but huge, huge single piece side screen there. Absolutely fantastic view out. You know, when you're sat at the sofa, it's right in your eye line and there is a fantastic view all the way around and matched on this side too, another big window there. Very relaxing setup and then this quite cool circular lighting feature overhead. And it's, it's just nice and calming, it's not too busy. A lot of these boats can be a bit busy or a bit showy. This has a really nice relaxed vibe to it. There's the helm area here. Again, very classy. Oh, these look like they're from a kind of Mercedes or something, but beautifully sort of scalloped seats. Very discreet little azimuth logo in the back of them. Slightly different color, it's a kind of slightly creamy, chalky, almost stone colored leather there and slightly whiter, paler there. Electronic control, so you can adjust the seat on your fingertips. There are fold down foot rests there. Then the helm station itself. Classic azimuth controls, a four spoke wheel. Garmin controls for the two Garmin screens. Again, matching screens. I suspect you can probably get a bigger option on these. These are relatively small, but you could probably get two slightly bigger ones on there. But very nice to have two of them. It means you can set it up so you can have navigation on one and radar on the other or ship's controls. Here are the engine controls themselves. Volvo electronic throttles, IPS controls. So again, just exactly as you want. And there is that repeater for the bow thruster. Nice little flexible light switch there. If you're driving at night, you can see that it has got its white and red light. So at night time, you can just use it to 
keep an eye on your chart without losing your night vision. USB socket, three plug helm. This is obviously set up as a UK boat, so UK fittings. And over here, lift that up. How lovely is that? So all your glasses beautifully stowed under there. Again, all the cutouts exactly to fit the glasses. They do do things like that very well as azimuth and a kind of bronze effect finish to that. So down the steps, nice wide walkway, nice gentle slope. Let's start by going forward. But before we do that, let's just have a look behind here because there is a full size washer dryer. Now that's a really good place for it. So you're in the kind of lobby area here. It's not in anybody's cabin. So that can be worked away without disturbing anyone. And up there, it's a bit more storage there, probably for your towels or bedding or something. But again, nice not to have that stealing space from any of the cabin storage. So forward into the VIP. Really good headroom in here, actually. Sometimes it sort of cramps a little bit towards the end there, but you can see there's plenty of headroom above me. There's a good, probably four inches above me. I'm sort of six foot one, so you're fine up to about six foot five in here. Really good broad bed. Again, it doesn't pinch in at the head too much or at the feet. That is a full width, king size bed. Got the hull windows under here. Got the curtains, obviously, when you need the privacy. Storage all around at eye level. And again, behind here, big hanging locker. And behind the door, yet more. So you're not short of storage space. TV set on the bulkhead, so directly opposite the bed. And of course, access to the bathroom. Now this is en suite for the VIP. Really good size, again, terrific headroom. Very nice, thin sort of ceramic bowl, all very elegant, and a walk-in shower. Now there is also access from that kind of lobby area, so we sometimes call it sort of Jack and Jill access. So you can lock that off and have it as ensuite, or you can use it as the day heads from the other side, but I'll show you that in a minute. So that is the forward VIP. And if we come back out into the lobby area, you can see there is also access through there into that same bathroom. Very practical though, it means you can have it as private when you want it or use it as the day heads during the day. Now this is the guest cabin, it's a twin cabin. I've got two single beds in here. Actually, they're not a bad size and they're the same width all the way along. Probably still going to be used by sort of kids or teenagers or something, but actually quite good space. There's a decent amount of space between the beds. Nice lighting around the top. You've got the reading lights as well as an overhead and a sort of feature light behind the bed head. And again, this nice soft fabric sides that just add a little bit of softness to the whole thing. Hull windows in there. Small opening port gives you a bit of fresh air. Hanging locker. Not bad at all. But this is where the magic happens, down in the owner's cabin. So walkway through here, obviously there's a door that closes off, so we are now in the cabin through here. Couple of steps down. Just as we pass, there is a big storage area in there. Very handy. And then into the cabin itself. Really great space in here. So quite low level bed, it's probably about 18 inches off the ground, but really big, really wide, and masses of headroom. I guess it helps because when you have the bed so low, it almost exaggerates the amount of room there is above it, and there's terrific standing headroom. Now, on this side, you can see there is a bit of a step up, but actually there is also a step up in the ceiling here. So when you do come around this side of the bed, there is still full standing headroom. It's a clever way of doing it actually. So it means it's full standing headroom all the way around the bed, even though there is that change in the floor level. Now bedside, not bedside, this is more a kind of vanity unit. These delicate little handles here, giving access in there, just lots more storage. 
these are the bedside tables. Lift up top, secret cubby hole for your treasures, your book, your watches, and lots more storage all the way down the side. So you can see the bed here really is quite low. I mean, that's just a few inches off the ground, but when you're this side, it feels a bit more of a sort of normal height, but it's quite a clever way of doing it. Again, there's a matching bedside table here. Again, this fabric bed head, simple, elegant, refined, backlit. And then this lovely sofa here, with even more kind of textures here. I don't know if you can see, but this is, has a more sort of bobbly texture to it, but just all adds to that feeling of a nice, soft, welcoming feel. Big hull windows here. Now, unlike the S series, it hasn't got six separate ones. You've just got these sort of double decker here and an opening section. Big <clears throat> walk-in wardrobe. Now that is quite a luxury on a boat this size. And that is a genuine walk-in wardrobe. You can properly stand in here, standing headroom, even in the wardrobe itself. So very nice. Lots of hanging space there, room for a few extra pillows, lots of shelving, safe for your precious jewels. And the TV set in the bulkhead kind of mirror effect again so you can just about see there's an LG logo down there but that all lights up and becomes a television when it's powered up and then of course there is an ensuite bathroom in here and a very fine one it is too full marble effect shower big overhead rain effect shower small seat in the corner so you can sit down and Wash your armpits while sitting down in there. Big mirror, little sink, nice Tecmar toilet in the corner, big window, nice and light. So, gradually make our way back up. And let's see if we can drop down into the engine bay. So, here we go, twist that, give that a heave, and we can lower ourselves down into the engine room. So I'm just gonna support myself on the table a little bit as we go down. There we go. Now, <coughs> here we go. So what have we got here? We have a pair of Volvo IPS 950s. So these are 725 horsepower each. The reason they call them 950s is because they claim that because of the more efficient IPS drive system, it's equivalent to around about 950 horsepower on shafts, even though you're only actually using 725 of them. So more efficient, but for similar speed, you should get around about 30 knots out of this is pretty good going maybe 31 32 which is good going for a big 30 ton flybridge now you can see that the actual IPS pod drives themselves are a little bit set back from the engines these short jack shafts leading out here into the swiveling pods themselves and that's usually just to help keep the weight a little bit further forward if it's all the way back then it tends to be a little bit stern heavy and it rides a bit bow up but by mounting the engines a little bit further forward you get all the benefits of an IPS drive system, but with the balance of a shaft drive boat. So haven't tested it ourselves yet, but should be a really nice level ride, not too bow up, nice and efficient, helping the bow to cut through the waves. So looking forward, masses of space either side here. You see I'm on a little perch here, but you can stand right down in the bilges there and have more or less full standing headroom. In fact, I say more or less, absolutely full standing headroom. Plenty of space there. So there you go. Let's climb back up. That clatter was my phone falling out of my pocket, but I have managed to retrieve that. So make our way back up the ladder, out into the cockpit. And there we go. That is the very latest Azimut 53 flybridge. Believe it or not, that is now the entry level boat in the Azimut range, but there is very little about this that feels entry level. Very sophisticated, very nicely designed inside and out. 
can't wait to drive it. So just pop that engine hatch down. Don't want anybody falling down there. Thank you very much for watching this latest motorboat and yachting yacht tour. If you haven't already, please do subscribe, hit the button and the little bell icon so that you will be notified whenever we publish a new video. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next one.